In this vlog, we're going to continue discussing administrative distances and the believability of routing protocols. So on router one, show IP route. Why in this topology is this loopback available in the routing table through BGP and why not for this route? So this network 2.2.2.2 is available in the routing table and the route was learnt via BGP. This network was learnt via EIJRP. So why is BGP used for the one network and not the other? The first thing you need to look at is look at this admin distance here. It's 20. So that BGP route has an administrative distance of 20. What are the administrative distances of BGP? And what you must remember is that you have two versions of BGP. EBGP and IBGP. EBGP has an admin distance of 20. IBGP has an admin distance of 200. So show IP BGP summary. We have a neighbor relationship to router two as well as to router three. Show IP BGP neighbor. The relationship to router two uses EBGP. Notice the autonomous system number for router two is two, and scrolling down, this neighbor 10122, which is router three, is using IBGP. Router three is an autonomous system one. The relationship is established. Are we learning the routes through BGP? So show IP BGP. Yes, we are learning both the loopback of router two as well as the loopback of router three through BGP. So BGP has both routes in the BGP routing table, but this route is not being put into the IP routing table. And we can see that because of this R, it says RIP failure. The RIP is the routing information base, which from a CCNA point of view is the routing table. So this route is not put into the IP routing table by BGP, and that's because a better route is available through EIGRP. So 3333 and 4.4.4.4 .4 .4 .4 are both not put into the IP writing table. Show IP BGP. We're not learning quadruple four through BGP. We are learning about this route, but because of the RIP failure, it's not put into the writing table. Notice here, I. The route was learned through IBGP, and the reason why this route is not put into the writing table is because EIGRP has a lower administrative distance than IBGP. So to prove that, let's remove EIGRP from router one. So rather no router EIGRP one, show IP route. Notice the route is now available through BGP. Admin distance is 200. So remember, IBGP has an administrative distance of 200. EBGP has an admin distance of 20. If we shut the neighbor relationship down, so neighbor 10112, shut down. What we should see is that the route is replaced by another routing protocol. In this case, it's OSPF. So I'm running OSPF on router one and router two, and router one has learned about that loopback through OSPF. Previously, because the route was learned through EBGP, the EBGP route took precedence. But now, because we've shut down the neighbor relationship, OSPF is able to add the route to the routing table. So no neighbor 10112 shutdown. When that relationship comes up, which it has, we should see the route replaced by a BGP route, and we can. Now in this example, RIP took a long time to converge, but notice RIP has been used as the routing protocol to get to this loopback rather than BGP. RIP has an admin distance of 120. IBGP has an admin distance of 200. RIP is more believable. So if we removed RIP from the router, what we should see is the route is now available through BGP. So in summary, IBGP has an admin distance of 200. RIP has an admin distance of 120. 
ISIS has an admin distance of 115. OSPF has an admin distance of 110. EIGRP internal routes have an admin distance of 90. Static routes to next hop addresses have a admin distance of one. Static route to directly connected interface has an admin distance of zero. The lower the number, the more believable. The routing protocol, remember with BGP, we have both eBGP and iBGP. eBGP admin distance is 20. iBGP admin distance is 200. Make sure you know your administrative distances. That concludes this vlog. If you've enjoyed the video, please like it. And very importantly, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.